Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. In this video, I'm going to be taking another look at the trickle tower that we set up in our quarantine room about three years ago. It takes me a long time to do updates. So in this video, I'm going to take another look at it and go through a few changes that I've made to it. Just get the gummers off the main pond first. The way this works, amazingly simple. Water is being pumped directly out of the tank. It enters the filter here on the side and there is a pipe that runs from one side to the other. There are two uprights on that pipe with two pieces and then the nozzles are spinning around on the top of that. At the moment, we only have a few fish in this quarantine room because it's winter time. This is the remnants of our stock for the year and we've moved them into here so they can winter over. So what the hell is a trickle tower? Well, a trickle tower is different to a conventional filter in a koi pond because you have media which is kept wet with water from the pond, as opposed to completely submerged in water. And because it's kept wet, because there is an abundance of oxygen available, the bacteria that lives in here can concentrate on the process of removing the ammonia and the nitrite from the water. And it does that in an accelerated fashion. The way this works, amazingly simple. Water is being pumped directly out of the tank. It enters the filter here on the side and there is a pipe that runs from one side to the other. There are two uprights on that pipe with two pieces and then the nozzles are spinning around on the top of that. The media that we're using in here is called Katama. It's a porous media that has a very high surface area. It's not particularly cheap but it's certainly nowhere near as expensive as some of the more exotic medias that you might see in use in backy showers. A lot of people set up these uh, showers, backy showers and trickle towers, to try and reduce the nitrates. To be honest with you, I don't know whether it's effective at doing that or not. Um, the idea is that deep inside these medias, you get anaerobic bacteria building up. And the anaerobic bacteria is able to remove the nitrate from the water by stealing one of the oxygen atoms and freeing it off as a gas. Uh, whether or not a filter like this or a shower is actually capable of doing anything useful, I really don't know. At the beginning of the season, when we had our first delivery, we went from half a dozen fish in these vats to 16 boxes of fish. And those fish went in immediately. And that's when this trickle tower really proved its worth. 24 hours after the fish went in, we did a test on the ammonia and there was the tiniest hint of ammonia in the tanks. 24 hours later, the ammonia had completely gone and we were left with just the merest hint of nitrite. And amazingly, 24 hours after that, the nitrite had gone as well. And I sincerely believe that that is a result of the trickle tower filter. This type of filter is similar to another type of filter that most people will be familiar with, and that is a backy shower filter. But there is a very important difference. This is one of the original spinners that I designed several years ago. It was really basic. It's basically just a socket with a thread on top and a T-piece that just drops on top. And this worked really well. The pressure of the water just caused it to spin round. The 
problem wasn't that it blew off. Eventually, you got a lot of wear and tear occurring on this area and inside there. And then a lot of water could just get out the sides and that stopped it from rotating efficiently. So we came up with a new design, a better design. This spin has been in operation for about nearly two years now. And it's actually starting to work itself loose. There's too much play in there. And that's causing the water to be able to escape around the sides. So I think we need to address that today and make a new spinner. Making one of these spinners just could not be easier. It's really, really straightforward. All that it's comprised of <clears throat> is two end caps, a standard three quarter inch straight, an inch and a quarter to inch reducer, and a three quarter inch T piece. So the T piece has got to be able to rotate smoothly inside the reducer. Like that. Now, the way that you trap it on there is by putting a short piece of three quarter inch pipe into the T piece, dropping it on there, and then that straight goes on the back and that still allows it to rotate but it won't fall off. Now the side pieces, these are made out of three quarter inch pipe. And I've gone down them and drilled a series of holes on there. Hole size is about three mil and I've spaced them about an inch apart. You can play around with the spacing and play around with the sizing. What you've got to remember is if the hole is too small, then you're going to get too much pressure and you might get blockages. If the holes are too big, then there's no pressure to spin the bar around. Really simple design that works really great. Now, of course, this has got to be glued together. And before you glue it, you need to check that the sides are the correct length and that the position of the holes is on opposite sides. So the pressure of the water makes it spin. If you glue it, it doesn't fly off. So what we've got to get now is water from the pump into here. We can't just connect a pipe straight onto that because it would prevent it from rotating. So what I've come up with is using a rubber boot fitting. And that goes over the top and then it just secures by tightening up the Jubilee clip and on this side you can connect your one and a half inch pipe and your bar will still spin freely. You definitely don't need to use a lot of glue when you're gluing this thing together. It doesn't matter if you get a small leak on it, you just need a little spot on the ends, that'll hold the end caps on. Just a tiny little spot. And it goes, just to stop them getting blown off. This one, before you glue that in there, it's important to make sure that this can definitely still rotate. You don't want that binding too much on there. If you do have an issue with it binding on there, then you just need to run a little bit of sandpaper around that first so that when it's in there, the rotation is nice and smooth. Spot of glue on there. Stick it in the bottom. Bit of glue on there. Glue that in. And it goes off and then this piece keep that well out of the way for the glue for now 
Then all we've got to do is glue the two spray bars in. And this is the bit where you need to make sure that when you glue them up, they are opposing each other on opposite sides. And also maybe slightly angled down as well. That works well. And a bit of glue in there. Make sure they are on opposite sides, slightly angled down. Yep, I did make a mistake. I glued that on before I put that on. Stupid mistake. And now the glue is causing it to bind. So it's gonna need a bit of rubbing with the sandpaper. All right, I'll balance the camera on the side and we'll have a go at swapping over this old rotator. Turn off the pump. This is working on a rubber boot fitting and it's been working without the need for really even tightening it up. That one's stuck on there. Let's pull it off. It's cold. So you can see the problem with this old one. It's had that much wear and tear now that that started to come loose and water's actually managing to escape around the sides. Here's a new one. Still slightly stiff. I might have to give it some help to get going, but we'll see. Just got to get that back on there. And that just locates on the inch and a half pipe that's in the bottom. Make sure it's all the way on. I'm just going to nip that Jubilee clip up a little bit. If this goes first time, without any encouragement, I'd be quite pleased with that. Tiny little bit of stiffness in there, but I'm pretty sure that that will make its own way out. Let's turn the pump back on and see. Come ah, oh, nice. So I'm chuffed to bits with that. That's gone straight on there and started first time. So if we can get another two years out of that one, that's cost to make that uh, about, well, less than 10 quid in bits. And I'm convinced that we can save an awful lot more than 10 quid just on the running cost of the pump. This kind of filter should work much more efficiently than any conventional submerged bed, any fluidized filter, um, and potentially, I, I would argue, just as well, 
if not better, than a shower filter. A shower filter is using the same kind of system as this, but what the shower doesn't do is it doesn't use a minimal amount of water. It requires a huge amount of water to get the same kind of conditions. This kind of filter is all about removing ammonia and nitrite from the water. There's no mechanical filtration in there. All of the sediment just goes straight back out the bottom, straight into the pond. It's all about the removal of nitrites and ammonia. And it does it in such an efficient way that even a relatively small filter like this one can cope with a huge volume of water and an immense stocking rate of fish. And now it's not throwing water over the sides as well. So I can stand here without getting wet. We do have a cover that we put over it, of course, just to make sure that you don't get any splashing. 